finalists. In fifth position, making his fourth career telecast after his first win from Cincinnati, Brian Hemmler. Bowling Brian in the opening match, a former United States Open champion, bowling out of Andover, Kansas, Justin Romick. Our third seed is the PBA Hall of Famer and an 18-time title. He's a defending champion from Las Vegas, Wayne Webb. The semifinal match features a two-time Tournament of Champions winner from Beaumont, Texas, Mark Williams. And our tournament leader has a streak of 14 straight match play appearances from Bolingbrook, Illinois, Steve Jarrows. And Nelson Burton has plenty of money in Peoria. Exciting price, fun, Chris, and a terrific field today. The guy to watch is in the number three slot. Wayne Webb trying to win this tournament for a third time. Unprecedented in the first match. U.S. Open champion against a young, tough tiger, Brian Himmler. There are 30 titles among the field of five. Uh, Justin Romick at home you're looking. There's three. We're using the full approach, though. Well, he's a powerful player, Chris. He's a collegiate player who has really matured out here on the tour. He knows how to win. Best performance this year was at Bretwood, where he finished fifth. He's ranked 26th among the PBA touring pros. Now, looking for his first victory is Brian Himmler of Cincinnati. He's only 23 years old. Moving way to the left. That had to be a Peoria scout. <laughs> Unusual pin action on mm. his opening shot. Him where it looks like he has about 12 pins in the rack. 23 years old, Chris. Mm -hmm. You can see the trajectory he's taken. He's on the left side of the approach, all the way out to the edge. Now watch this pin action just everything moving around. <laughs> Definite pull there. We saw his first shot. He sent it very wide on the right-hand lane out to about the second board. This time he gives the ball no chance. Watch this trajectory. Sets it down on board, maybe 38. There's 42 in the lane. As the lane is 42 inches wide, may I say 39 boards. Gets high, leaves the three, six, nine, ten. This is a tough spare. Brian Hemmler, a newcomer on the telecast. Best was a second place finish in Tucson this year. 175 pounder. And now the All-American Collegiate Bowler at Wichita State University before he came out on tour seven years ago. Three titles. Always fiddling around with that thumb hole, finger holes. He's really meticulous on his ball feel. He was putting tape in his thumb hole before we went on the air. He adds another piece because he kind of lost the ball in the first frame, got a good break crossing over the Brooklyn side. And you may notice his index finger. He uses a little gripper there just to hold the ball better and balance the ball. See if he can make a double. The nine on the right lane of this beautiful bowling establishment called Landmark, 50 lanes total. But it's a vast entertainment complex. A health club second to none bow. Great for weightlifting, basketball, whatever be. 12 motion picture houses. Way to the left now. Justin's very proud of the fact that he is a United States Open champion. Did so at Reno, Nevada. Parker Bone, 94, or rather in Troy, Michigan. Very likable redhead. 
Well, he is a nice guy. And here's a newcomer, Chris, that we haven't mm -hmm. seen on our championship round. He's appeared on ESPN earlier in the year, finishing second to Pete Weber, as you said. He really has a powerful ball. I guess a rainbow strike. Now we see that power right here as he sets up for a nice, solid delivery. Five steps, kicks that left foot going. Now watch how he cocks the ball at the top of the back. So look at his hand wide open, shoulders wide open. Then he closes down completely through. He is a power player plus. Look where he's sliding, almost on the left-hand lane. You can use all the approach if he had to. He could stand over two lanes if he could keep the ball on the correct lane. The total approach is yours. Only the lane you cannot change. sort of an overcast day and the capacity crowd and they're watching Justin Romick and a uh, man hoping to win his first title here, Brian Hemmler. Exciting opening match. Uh, Romick got a good break in the first frame, got a solid 10 in the second. He's off with a strike in the third, trying to make a double. And once again, we are even in our first match. Pinfall you just heard. Practicing Wayne Webb, the defending champion. He will meet the winner of this, our first game. Careful placement, though. Very meticulous. That college education, four years of bowling in the college program, and of course a national championship, has brought him a lot of experience to the tour. Nineteen eighty-seven collegiate champion. Crossing over, and he'll take it. Gives him a ten-pin lead. Well, that shouldn't brought, bother Brian Himmler. Last night, Himmler bowled Bernie Schlegel to see who had the right to finished in the top five. Ernie Schlegel got two great breaks, but Brian still took the match 242 to 210. Again, we are even. Watch the action of the head pin to the left sideboard. Kicks across. Just a typical power player strike. Never saw strikes like that 10 years ago, but with the inception of uh, the new finishes we have on the lanes, the reactive resin bowling balls, and the power these players use, it's very common to see a touring player knock out the 10 with a head pin. just sends it out there and he leaves this split he needs to slide that two pin into the ten the ball will take out the four and by his own volition Chris as you see that example of how to make it Brian has to avoid the big mistake he could have won the tournament in two sound against Pete Weber he left a split just like this in the ninth frame of the crucial final game mm -hmm. Tough break, it's an open frame. You know, next Saturday at 3, 2 Central, on ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour, it's the first of bowling's Triple Crown events. The PBA National Championship from Toledo. That's next Saturday at 3, 2 Central time, right here on ABC. Romick, 15-pin lead, three strikes in a row can make it four, and a 25-pin lead. Going, jumping on the opportunity. Well, let's take a look at the oil pattern on the PBA Tour. The pin's obviously 40 feet down the lane, and what I call this is really a lengthwise taper. There's heavy oil here, a little medium oil here, light here, and notice this taper down in here. This is what the players play off of. They try to go around the taper into the pocket. Both players are doing that very well in the first game today. Same oil pattern as we had in Las Vegas. However, this is a wood lane bowling center. Las Vegas were synthetics. Thank you. 
they play a little bit different. Another nine. This down in left lane. Justin's wife, Christy, unable to make it up here to Peoria today. Uh, homesick. She wants to send this uh, honey get well soon, and I'll try to make as much money as I can, but right now he has a terrific 24-pin lead, an easy spare for this young man, seventh frame. Okay. Here's a look at the, uh, the Peoria Civic Center, which is playing host to Peoria's own version of March Madness, high school style, featuring Manual High School's number one team in the country. Peoria. Brian Hamler has never won a national tournament. He has four regionals in match play here. He was 13 and 11 with a 213 average. Right now he's trailing by 24. Oh, he did that strike because in the last frame he opened the 2 4 10 split. And now on the right lane, um, he has left. A 10. There you see Mom and Dad, Brad and Kathy. Good spare. Here's Bo. Thank you, Chris. Wayne Webb, many time champion, and I've known you for a lot of years. You seem more relaxed on tour than ever before. What's the story, pal? I started a new business, uh, business on tour called uh, Pro Bowlers Karaoke, and it's a uh, it's really helped me out as far as my mental game because it, it takes all the stress away from me. I'm in there working every night, and uh, I just feel a lot better about everything. Well, you're entertaining the players in, after the tournament, entertaining us today. Good luck. Okay. Back to you, Chris. Okay. On the left lane, after a spare. There he's back. Perfect solid pocket hit for Brian Himmler. Bo mentioned earlier that Chris, the um, Justin Romick's wife is back at Andover, Kansas. Ill. Well, there are a lot of Kansas people not feeling too good today because their Kansas basketball team was upset last night. We feel for them. Monday night on ABC is Oscar night with Billy Crystal hosting the live broadcast of the Academy Awards and a new Barbara Walters special with Lauren Bacall, Oscar nominee Woody Harrelson, and Harrison Ford. The whole night starts at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 Central, and 6 on the West Coast, Monday on ABC. See how Justin Romick is playing the championship pair, this being the left-hand lane 37, starting about the center. He's going to walk fairly straight. He's got a good style playing right around the third arrow. So he's going to start in here, have that ball just shoot out here. And watch the loft he gets on that ball. Well out over the foul line to delay the hook. So professional, so smooth. Age by 34 now. That um, foundation frame coming up. He's got a strike up. Here he is. Cincinnati's own. Cincinnati, a great bowling city. Mandatory that he strike here. Cannot win without a strike. Good pressure shot, Nelson. Well, Chris, he is, is he 23 years old. He bowled a lot of action match games around mm -hmm. Cincinnati, and he's really matured out here. The players have seen him get better and better. He's put himself in a position where he can still win this game. Right here, if he strikes here, he'll have a potential 235. Romick going at a 238 pace. The match is up for grabs. Remember some of the things we've seen the first two weeks where players in Walter Ray's category even opening in the tenth. So let's see what happens. Opening match. Four. On the wave of 
other hand, there's like... Oh, shucks. Well, the story of this match has been the left-hand lane. Right now, you see him drift a little bit high. He doesn't trip out the four-pin, which he really needed this strike to stay in the match. And Justin Roma got two lucky breaks on the lane. Let's face it, pretty even match. Roma got the break. Mm -hmm. Competitor that he is, it is not like the end result. You're going to hear a lot more from mm -hmm. him. He's ranked 22nd on the tour, growing and growing. Here's the guy who's already won a U.S. Open champion, is, and he's matured. He's already paid his dues. Brian Himmler just got a bad break this match. Nice round of applause from friendly, courteous, Peoria, Illinois. Up to 211. Potential 259. The story of this first match, obviously the two shots, the opening shots on the left-hand lane for Justin Romick. It's a terrific break crossing over, carrying Brooklyn strikes, and he parlayed that into a big game and an opening match victory. All right, the winner, Justin Romick. This ABC sports presentation, the professional bowlers tour, will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. America's favorite fries and Columbia 300 Incorporated introducing Rage Let It Out. The Gleaming Lane at Landmark. And our first game is over with nine strikes. Justin Romick, 258. Brian Himmler, 211. And it's Wayne Webb next on the beautiful testing lane. Well, Chris, it was an opening, uh, exciting opening match. You got Wayne Webb, who really has this house down going for his third victory here at Peoria. However, during the week, they not only had bowling here, but we were in New York, and I was there to watch you be inducted into the Sportscasters Hall of Fame. My congratulations goes with you. There's Dick Enberg, a friend of yours. Dr. Kissinger were there. Mm -hmm. And Dick Enberg. And there is Tom after our senior vice president of finance and administration that handed me the heavy mic. And I appreciate it very much. Also winners there were Chris Berman and Marv Albert. Thank you. Thank you, Peoria. Okay, Romick, who's got two terrific breaks in the first match on this left-hand lane. Looks like he's got his ball zeroed in. He's got it all taped up, finger taped up. And let's see if he's got the lane zeroed in. Jeff strike of the afternoon, first frame, second game. Now, here's the 18-time champion, terrific guy, Wayne Webb. In the 18 PBA titles there at the bottom. And obviously he wants another. He was 12 and 12 in match play. There's 39-year-olders in the PBA Hall of Fame. Put in in 1993. He says that since he went on tour, he's had a total of 12 different homes. Right now, it's Las Vegas. He won here last year, continuing his power. You ready, Bo? All set, Chris. You know, it's interesting. Brian Himmler, uh, you uh, you bowled pretty well, but you, Wayne Webb got the brakes on the left-hand lane. Justin got the brakes on the left lane. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the left lane definitely started hooking a lot earlier, and you had to go around it more. And just that one shot I missed when I 2 four ten. that's what ended up costing me. So, I bowled a decent game off, you know, uh, a couple breaks, and I might have won. All right, good luck next week at the PBA National. Back to you, Chris. Okay. Our 36th year that we've televised professional bowling, starting in 1962, here in Peoria, the pros have come since 1980. And that was the first, and the first round leader of the tournament in 1980 was no other than Nelson Burton, Jr. These lanes have changed a little bit. No. 
say this is the most common tough spare that a PBA player gets. See, he has to get the ball over here in the 3-6 zone, carry out the 9, and avoid chopping off this 10-pin. So he's going to play some hook down the right side. you got to take a chance on, on chopping it to carry that back 9-pin. Not much margin for error. No chop. Game and... Open frame, 52 through 3. But Justin just doesn't give the ball enough room. It looks like he hung in that thumb hole. Maybe needs a little more work on it, but uh, right now he's dug himself a big hole against the defending champion and the guy trying to win this tur tournament for the third time. <laughs> Player of the year in 1980, and you know, from 1974 through 84, Earl Anthony and Mark Ross had won the Player of the Year awards, except 80. And that's when Wayne Webb did it. Watch Webb. He's playing a much straighter shot than even back when he was Player of the Year, Chris. He's almost straight down, minimum hook, one of the terrific arm swings ever in the sport. This week, we flash back to the beginning of the Walter Ray Williams Jr. era. To a piece of bowling history, it was right here that the current number one player in the world, Walter Ray Williams Jr., claimed his first career title. Of course, accepting trophies has become somewhat of a habit since then for Walter Ray. 1994 U.S. Open champion for the first time today is trailing. Now against Wayne Webb. Look like after that nasty open frame, he'd get them all, but the seven pin. He'll try to cover that now. So there you saw the machines operating in the background. Okay. Working. Okay, Nelson. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Mark Williams, you know, uh, you used a 16-pound ball years ago, then down to 15, and now you tell me you're using a 14. What's the story here, pal? Well, Bo, the conditions on tour this year, I feel the middle of the lane's a little drier. I need to project the ball to the right and still recover with some energy at the back end. I couldn't do it with the 15s. I thought I'd try the 14s. Got a chance to win a tournament with one today, I guess. Well, how about the carry? Don't you give up some carry? Well, I don't think I do. I, uh, the balls are so strong. Brunswick enhances their lighter weight balls, and I've really got them rolling hard on the back end. All right, so that's the story for him. He's going with a 14-pound ball. He'll be in the semifinal match, Chris. Okay. Dry smile on the face of the 30-year-old Justin Romick, Landover, Kansas. Wichita State is school. Wayne Webb, originally from Rehoboth, Massachusetts. That's very close to Seekonk, one of my favorite towns. Six. Wayne Webb, just a terrific arm swing, very short style, as he is a very short man at five feet, five inches tall. But watch this arm swing. You want to see perfect position for you young players. He gets right in the position where his arm and shoulder are just moving straight through the shot like that. All pendulum, all power. That five foot five frame. Each professional has an open frame, Nelson. Chris, you know, as, as, good as, as good as Wayne Webb is, and he can make the shot, why does he throw a, a hook ball at this particular shot? He tries to flatten it out, but you got to throw it hard if you want it to flatten out and slide into the 3-6. A physical mistake by Wayne Webb. The champion comes back. Coming up next, you'll see the World Figure Skating Championships presented by MasterCard. Along with the defending world champion, Michelle Kwan, there will be our, our national champion, Tara Lipinski. 
and Russia's Irina Slutskaya. And on Wide World Classic, presented by Gossamer Bay Vineyard, that's the first of Janet Lynn's five U.S. figure skating titles. <laughs> Doubling up Justin Romick here in our second game, Fury Open. Key shot for a good athlete there, Justin flips out to 10. Has a lot of physical strength. One of his hobbies is weightlifting. Has a best bench press of 280 pounds when he weighed 150, so almost twice body weight. You got some muddy muscle stacked in that frame. Strike here. The lead of Webbs is only four. All right. Spring temperature around Peoria this week. And you know what that means. Kids head to the playground at Glen Oak Park. It's by four pins. Gonna increase it back to 14. Ooh, nicely broke up the 7-10. Looked like he got the ball in the right area, just didn't have enough speed to hold the line. Two pin went between the four and seven, did not take out the seven. Wayne Webb across lane with this spare would maintain a very slight four pin lead through seven. And that brilliant orange red spare ball is something to behold as it goes down uh, beautiful lanes here. Mark Williams warming up to our right. He'll meet the winner. Steve Jaros is our tournament leader. Three nine ten, high hit. That's been the difficult lane so far in the championship round today. Gave Himmler trouble, Roma got by on it, and now a very tough split. What Wayne has to do is get the ball over here in the three, have the ball deflect into the ten, and then back into the nine. The ball actually deflects twice. Watch this, boom. It can be made. He needs to convert this to maintain his lead. Beautiful. Follow through. Extra long. Lovely. Perfect. What a pearl. Queen Webb. Justin Romick was down 38 pins in the third frame, can take the lead here, eighth frame. Head to head battle continues. All but the four. Look at the profile of these players throughout the week. They all average around 220, 222 on this pair, so. I don't expect to see a 279 necessary to win a match. Both these players have put themselves in a position to go in the 220s. There are the titles, all time being Earl Anthony with 41, then Ross Johnson and Dick Weber, Mike Albee, Ed Hoosier, Walter Ray, and Pete Weber, Dick Ritker, and Dave Davis, and Wayne Webb. And that's on the national tour. Congratulations, Zero Anthony. Won two weeks ago on mm -hmm. the seniors Indeed. tour. Now the pivotal ninth frame. Romick trails by two. Walter Ray Williams winning his first title right here. He didn't bowl this week. Horseshoes, maybe? No, just a week out. Had to go to the bank with all that money. Well, I guess. All right, for Justin Romick, let's give him a spare here. He'll trail by three. Wayne Webb coming up. <laughs> Interestingly enough, Wayne Webb, the higher of the two finishers, gets to choose the finishing lane. He's chosen the tough lane, so it behooves him to strike here in the ninth. Wayne 
Ben is noted to change his style every now and then. Not, what? not from game to game, but year to year. Agreed, Chris. He used to be a terrific power player. He's a very, we talked about Justin Romick lifting weights. Wayne Webb's hobby is arm wrestling. Has actually competed in tournaments. This guy is hard to knock over the right arm, and all he wants to do is knock over 10 pins right here and get eight spare after that, and he'll win the tight, the match. So it's not over. He needs a strike and eight to lock up the match. Wayne in his career is worth a million one hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars. Thus far this year, eleven thousand. Last year, forty-eight. Needs eight spare to lock the match. Remember, Walter Ray just last week needed nine to win the title and got six. So let's see what happens. Romick knows what's in front of him. Spirited Wayne Webb. Got the magic going today. He's locked up this match. Just two pleasant young men out there. Wayne Webb, 18-time titleist, Justin Romick. You'll see a lot more of him. That follow-through was more like a handshake. Wayne Webb, it is fun to watch him compete. There he is, a good shot of him. Using a house full is no easy task. Here's Bo Burton at Mark Frank's Fiesta Bowl, trying to find a weapon. Actually, my color. This one, a gorilla must own this thing. Wow. Purple? No. Here we go. All right. The house ball. This one seems pretty close. Why do we know that? There's three things to consider. Number one, the weight. Try to find a house ball that you can handle and hold by your side for about 10 seconds without dropping your shoulder or even dropping the ball onto the ground. The second point to consider is the span. That's the distance between the thumb and the fingers. Put your thumb all the way in the ball and see if your fingers lay between the first and second knuckles as they cover the finger hole. And the last thing to consider is the hole size. Try to get a thumb hole that's fairly comfortable, not too tight or too loose, and finger holes that fall into that same category, just kind of medium snug. Now let's see how this one works for me. Not bad, but if you really want to enjoy the sport of bowling, invest in your own bowling ball and you'll enjoy the game more. Here at Spectacular Landmark Recreation Center Lanes, the already open now has two matches gone by. The first, 258 to 211, Justin Roman. Then he faced Wayne Webb, the defending champion, and with nine strikes, it was 233 to uh, 122. And Doug Holmes, our congenial host here, watching some of the action as we look at the top 24. Solid average to make the top 24, 213. Mark Roth, a comeback week, just missed the cash by two pins. He'll bowl next week in Toledo, the national championship. Finishing just six, Harry Sullins. Wants to say hi to his fiance, tough as ever, Ernie Schlegel. Bob Warren Jr. will be home in Erie in two weeks. Roger Bowker just grinding away. Don Silvius said hi for Easter for his parents. He will try to get home, but he doesn't know. Parker Bone just missed winning three in a row. Big Bob Spaulding, bench pressing over 400 now. John Gant, the tournament champions champion. Kevin McGear, Tim Chris having a good year, Scott Alexander, former PBA national champion, George Brooks round out the top 24 this week, Chris. And here are upcoming stops. Next week, the PBA national championship from Toledo, Ohio, beginning at 3 Eastern time. Nelson Burton will bowl in that championship. Then the flagship open from Erie, Pennsylvania at April 5th. Arena bowling starting at eight at, at one o'clock a different time. Normal time is three Eastern. And we get ready now for match three. Mark Williams. 
Wayne Rand. Two of the PBA greats here in the semifinal. Mark Williams won over a million dollars. Wayne Webb, another millionaire. Semifinal. <laughs> Beaumont's Mark Williams. He hasn't won since 1988. He won the Tournament of Champions for the second time in Akron. <laughs> Looks like they've gone head to head before. It looks like many times mutual respect, but the key is the left-hand lane. Mark Williams whispered to me when I was down there talking to him. He is so undecided on lane 37. Do I move in, play it, big hook? Do I move out, throw it straight? Wayne Webb seems like he has it figured out better than any of the other combatants so far today. Four pin. Wayne is in his 68th television appearance. Mark Williams in his 41st. Nice move. Beautiful little hook at the end to knock down the four pin and making uh, Wayne continuing to mark. Now Mark Williams who opened with a strike. He's a 39-year-old right-hander. Ten pin. Solid ten. Darn it. Mark is ranked fourteenth among the touring professionals. There's a good look at it. Okay, Bo. Thank you, Chris. Justin, uh, first game, he kind of got away with the left-hand lane. The second game, uh, Wayne Webb made a heck of a shot making a split against you. It was the undoing. Yeah, it was a tough shot. You know, you're shooting the, uh, the outside is slick and the inside hooks a little bit. I didn't think there's any way you could, could pick that up, but I want to thank Brunswick for helping me out this week and getting me here, and maybe next time it'll work out my way. Can you give some advice to Mark Williams out there? He's struggling on the left-hand lane. Uh, the main thing I can say is make sure you're really stay down and be clean with the ball. If you hit up on the ball just a hair, the ball's going to take off in the head. It's real sensitive to how you, uh, the lock and turn. So just make sure you stay down and be loose with it. All right, that's good advice. Williams is struggling on the left-hand lane. Back to you, Chris. Okay. Here's that one pin spare. And the nine is gone. Incidentally, the pros converted 165 of 169 single pins they were left in 64 games. That's a 97% rate. They missed a single pin once every 16 games. I wish I could do that. So, Wayne Webb gets equal treatment. Well, Chris, he's uh, a little bit unemotional about that, but that was a terrific shot, the solid nine. And relating back to those single pins, when you when you were 170 average bowler, uh, you didn't miss many of those, but Wayne Webb won't miss this one, the solid nine. Nines are difficult, though. Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> you raised my average a little. Okay. Both pros continuing to mark. Matching frames are unbelievable. Boy, Steve Charles is cranking it up over there. He's a tournament leader. Wayne Webb. Mark Williams, if you come across the bridge from East Peoria, you can head downtown and jump aboard a paddle wheeler, the spirit of Peoria. We've been there. What an interviewer. Here's Mark Williams now. It's all even. Go 
Well, I'll leave him. They both struck in the first frame, spares in the second and third, and now strikes in the fourth. Mark, uh, we always like to do lookalikes, a little bit like uh, Glenn Campbell, maybe. Somebody behind me said Robert Redford. Three six for the pro from Belmont. All right, this is a wonderful shot of his style. Isn't it smooth? But notice the follow through. Still got it up. High hit as you see. Now going for the three six. Okay, here comes Bo. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Steve Jaros, uh, you know, the book on you for years was Make the Lane Stuff, Steve Jaros is there. But this year you're hitting everything, especially the high-scoring houses. What's the difference? Well, I, I guess I've been out here long enough that I'm starting to learn a little bit more every week. Um, I've played around a little bit with some different releases when the scores have been higher, try to hook it a little bit more, a little bit with speed control, and I've been able to keep it well enough to stay up there now. How about today? What are you going with, big hook or straight? Well, I, I think uh, during the practice, I had a little better shot going straight. We're going to throw some practice shots and see. All right, Chris, mm. he's in the final match. And yes. We still have a semifinal to be determined. Such beautiful repetition. Byron Nelson, great golf legend, always told me we were doing telecasts. It's a repetition of the swing and the stroke. There's another one. Three in a row. And is out to a 20 pin lead. Up comes much taller Mark Williams. He's had spare working shooting in the sixth frame. He's six feet one inches tall, 200 pounder. And has magnificent bowling shoes. Oh, are they patent leather and gleaming? Well, you see Mark Williams with the big hook, and nice and smooth. The ball goes right out by the very edge board. Remember, he's only using a 14-pound ball, but with that six-degree angle of pocket, he carries the 10-pin out. And it's absolutely mandatory that he hits this left-hand lane. Wayne Webb is zeroed in. Mark Williams has been lost here. All right. That's a big double. Tomorrow night be back in Florida, hopefully. If you look at Mark Williams, who trails by 10. Okay. That's uh, Bill Becker there at the left of your screen, Ray right Becker, the proprietor's brother. Pin lead can make it 20. Well, we have a great vantage point, but yours is even better at home. Don't forget, next week, the PBA National from Toledo. What he has to do is get the ball between the two and four pins to slide the two over into the ten. Justin Romek said that the slick outside, and that's exactly what happened. He sent it too wide. Boy, the difference between making this split and missing, it's got to be just a quarter of an inch as a two-pin just slides by and lies down next to the 10 and open the door for Mark Williams to take the lead if he can strike. Well, he's going to have to convince me that a 14-pound ball will carry that shot consistently. I think maybe the solid hits, yes, but that one there, he needed that strike to take the lead. The lighter ball deflected too much. Okay. okay, tomorrow night, ABC starts with Lois and Clark.
followed by America's Funniest Home Videos. Then, Lisa Hartman Black stars in the world premiere of the Sunday night movie, Out of Nowhere, all tomorrow night, on ABC. Okay, Mark Williams has a potential 228. Wayne Webb going at 214 pace. Big time shot there. Big night frame. Yes. The winner meets Jarris. Wayne Webb with that 16-pounder just sawing him up. This match is still up for grabs, though. Wayne Webb with two strikes and five pins can shut out Mark Williams. However, Wayne Webb is on the lane that's given everybody the most problem. That ball just cut right through the heart. It didn't even look high. He leaves the 4-6. Watch this hit. Sends it wide. Looks like he's going to trip out the four pin. No ball deflection. And now he has to try to make it. He has to try to make it. He can't gamble on Mark Williams opening. Fire hard and hope. Disappointment. Well, the situation for Mark Williams is simply this, a spare and five pins. And this is the good lane. Oh, my. Yes. Three, six, ten. Has to make this spare and get five pins to go into the championship game. Oh, my. Wayne Webb wins sitting on the bench. Both players opening in the 10th, Chris. Yep. Wow. 202 to 196. Oh. Ball just slides by the three pin. Mark Williams just hands the match to Wayne Webb. What a reprieve. Wayne Webb is going to be going for his third championship here in Peoria against Steve Jaros. The final match coming up. This ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Tour will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC station. I'm Brad Musburger in Lausanne, Switzerland. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports at 4.30 Eastern and Pacific, we continue our coverage of the World Figure Skating Championships presented by MasterCard. This afternoon, it's the ladies' short program featuring the American contingent, current U.S. champion, Tara Lipinski, reigning world champion, Michelle Kwan, and 1995 U.S. champion, Nicole Bobin. Coming up next from Lausanne, Switzerland, the World Figure Skating Championship presented by MasterCard on ABC's Wide World of Sports. In that first game, Justin Romick defeated Brian Hamler, 258 to 211. And in marching in then against Wayne Webb, Romick was defeated 233 to 192. Then in a bittersweet, unbelievable third match, Webb defeats Williams 201 to 196. Hope you saw it. Strange. Well, Chris, uh, I think a couple of things have happened. Number one, the key is the left-hand lane. Number two, when you see guys opening this much, I think it's a little bit of residue if they've been bowling on pretty soft lane conditions the last couple of weeks, averaging 230, 240. They're a little shaky on spares. They're used to getting a lot of strikes, and so it's been the difference so far. And I think that uh, that may be the difference here in this final match. 
Okay, the final worth 18,000 to the victor. And, uh, and you know that uh, Jaros, uh, he, he needs to win here. He's only won in Oklahoma, and anybody who wins later on in the year will be in the Showboat King of the Hill matches, the return of those, our last four telecasts in June. So that'll be exciting, Chris. May 31st. Don't forget it. That's a lot of fun. You win, you move on. Listen, that's what Wayne Webb has done. He has won enough today to move into the finals against Steve Jaros of Bolingbrook, Illinois. We saw him last week. Steve Jaros. And now Wayne Webb. playing that outside line, less hook than any player in the championship round today. This is his footwork. He's going to try to roll the ball right between these first and second arrows. Really a good arm swing, straight line. I like his game. It's lasted many years. There you go, the main game. The title game, a double. Now let's see if Jaros can hit the right-hand lane. Everybody has struggled the left. Jaros nails the left on his first shot. Is it going to fake him out and give him trouble on the right? A tournament leader. Two national titles, 12 regional. Now you watch Jaros, he has many different styles, and that's, uh, he's secretly become one of the really tough players out here. And watch how ideal he plays this championship here. He's very tight line on this lane. Everybody else is trying to hook it except he and Wayne Webb, almost straight, and he can really hook it when necessary. Three bagger. Now can Webb match it? He's up to the third frame. the tournament leader, Steve Jaros, at the moment, trailing by 10. But he has three in a row. Strike here will tie up Wayne Webb. Mom and fiance. Mom Helen and June D. There you see it. Eight. Yeah, Jaros brings out the best in players. The last game, the 56 games of the showboat, Walter Ray Williams bowls 300 against him. Last week in the championship round on ABC TV, mm -hmm. Parker Bone bowls 299 at against him. And so far, Wayne Webb is perfect against Steve Jaros, but he's doing the right thing. He's throwing all strikes himself. Maybe he's learned his lesson. Uh, the single two pin. He just loses the ball off his hands. 
Steve lifts the ball very much with his wrist. He rolls his thumb underneath, lifts his wrist right through. He lost it off his hand, didn't get the kick, and the ball leaves the, the two. Well, one thing separating these two professionals, one from Las Vegas, this one from Bolingbrook, Illinois, it's near Joliet in Wheaton. five in a row, leaving a 10-10 on that left line. Well, Wayne Webb in dead stroke at this part in the championship round just gets a real bad break if he could have started with six in a row. He's a solid 10. So now Steve Jarrett is up. He and his mother, Helen, whom you saw a little while ago, have a, um, a push-up in the uh, Fox Lanes in Wheaton, Illinois. Okay, coming up next on Wide World, the Lady Short Program. All right. Nine. Good shot. Steve with a very low maintenance game. He's got a short swing, doesn't get it out of line much. Keeps the ball in play at all times. He's going to be around for a long time. All right, come on, back on it now. One time. Time for the pep talk. just doesn't have the left-hand lane figured out. Wayne Webb has, remember, bowled almost three games. He's had a chance to experiment around. He's made a couple of splits on this left-hand lane. He is zeroed. Jaros is still experimenting. He's thrown a couple of good shots, but it's not much margin of error on this lane. Steve with a wireless mic, and you hear him pep talking and diagnosing from time to time. Back in the groove. There's really nobody prettier in the last two decades when he's on like Wayne Webb. He has a good blend of power and control. That ball would have knocked down anything you put up there, yet he did it effortlessly and without having to hook it too much. Leads by 13, can make it 23 eighth frame championship match. The pass to the crowd in it. You watch Wayne Webb's reaction. This is one of his finest shots of the day. Carries the 10 pin out. But almost more importantly, Steve Jaros. He reacted to it. He says, what is happening to me? Every time I get out here, a guy strike on every ball. Let's see if he can come back. <laughs> Jaros, a possible 256. Wayne Webb, a possible 279. Mm -hmm. Jaros elected to finish on the right-hand lane if he needs to throw strikes to win the championship. Some interested spectators there. June, Steve's fiance, mother on the mic. Come on, ball. Oh. No, no. Catching 
whispering to himself, hang spot. And that's the same thing all the other players have said. When they send it wide, it kind of hangs out there on the first or second board. If they try to push it up towards the pocket, it hooks early. A very difficult shot. Best man has it figured out. Oh, oh. sleeper right. Mm. <sighs> Gotta make those spares. Wayne Webb can put the, the nail in the coffin here. Okay, we're going to have another opportunity to shoot the spares. And, Bo, didn't you always tell me if you made all spares in a game, you'd shoot 190? Well, considering you get nine on the first yeah. ball, and uh, you're not going to miss many spares, that's for sure. And good point to be made there, Chris. Right now, Wayne Webb needs a spare or two spares here to win the title. Don't need strikes now. Ooh. Sharp breaking at the end, that orange ball. Wayne needs nine on the first ball to lock up his third Peoria championship. And it's his third game of the afternoon. <laughs> Two in a row, he's saying. you get in your eye look at it there's a certain look you get when you've conquered the world in a sport it may only be for a day but enjoy it Wayne Webb mm -hmm. and a 39 year older jumps on it and he's had 10 strikes 258 standing applause What a disappointment, Steve Jarrows. He'll be back. Third in Las Vegas. Oh, he's moving up. He'll be second. The Peoria Open. Well, it's a 2 0 3 for Steve Jarrows. And a 258 with 10 strikes for Wayne Webb. Now living in Las Vegas, Nevada. This crowd is something. It's Peoria. Wayne acknowledging his friends in the crowd. And why not as we pass Ray Becker and a lot of other friends there in the audience. We'll be back. And on your screen, wherever you are, that's the way they finished. Wayne Webb, 18. Steve Jarrows, 9,500, Mark Williams, Justin Romick, and Brian Himmler. And these are the scores and the stepladder. But at the end, it was this man who was born in Rehoboth, Massachusetts, now bowling out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Wayne Webb, we're proud of you. Thank you. Oh, this was great. I, did, I, I don't even know what to say, being... Uh, Third time here. I think I'm just going to move here. I've moved everywhere else. I might as well be here. Well, I'm sure Ray Becker, along to your right, or his brother Bill, could uh, find you some property. Oh, I'm sure they could build me a house. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why do you do so well here? I don't know what it is. I, the fans are always uh, real supportive. I think they're they're with me right from the beginning, and uh, I just love the way. It, uh, the wood carries here, and my carry's usually pretty good here. When you were using uh, two balls, one for spares, of course. Yeah, the uh, one felt a little bit better, so I could throw it a little harder, so uh, that's what I was using for spares. What color do you call that? Which one? The spare ball. That's red. Oh. <laughs> Not to me, it's orange red. <laughs> but uh, Ray Becker is here, and he is doing double duty today. He's the proprietor here of Landmark, and needs to be congratulated. All right. 
Let's uh, first, how about the check? Well, you want the check first? Yeah. Uh, I was going to keep the check for a while and get interest on it. I'll give you the throat. Oh. <laughs> there you are, Wayne. Congratulations. $18,000. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to thank Mr. Becker, everyone here at Landmark, uh, Doug Holmes. I'll tell you what, you guys are great. This is, uh, this is perfect. This is probably just enough for a halfway decent down payment on a house. <laughs> Listen, we, uh, we have a chance to hear from Steve Jarlis, who's been on our telecast two weeks in a row. He's with Bo. So, Bo, give him a quick talk. All right, Chris, uh, congratulations to Wayne Webb. And Steve, you know, the left-hand lane was the key. Wayne Webb was zeroed and uh, just almost had no chance. Well, I guess the left lane was tough for everybody except Wayne. Um, I wanted to make him finish on it in case I needed to get up and throw a double. Um, made a really bad shot in the ninth and uh, just kind of lost it, but I'll be back. All right, he'll be back in the national championship. And back to Chris with the champion. You can bet Wayne Webb will be back. Well, now, I, I know you're going to spend that, Wayne. I've known you a long time. Here's the trophy. Here's the trophy. Congratulations, and hope to see you next year. All right, thank you. This is a good bookend for the one I won last year. All right, thank you. Wayne, are you going on to Toledo? Oh, yeah, we, uh, we got to be there by tonight. My truck's in being worked on. I hope, <laughs> I hope I can be there. You think I'll be finished? No. <laughs> well, Wayne, congratulations, Ray. Always nice to see you. You're a great friend. All right, we're here at uh, Landmark, and we move on to Toledo for the PBA National Championship. So for um, Nelson Burton, Jr., I'm Chris Schenkel. Always glad to come to Peoria. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>